Welcome back for another episode. Welcome back everybody. I'm just finishing cleaning up the Hanes. We've been out on a few trips. The rain's actually giving me a bit of a hand today. More great content coming up. So if you haven't already, make sure you click that little subscribe button so you don't miss any of that future content. Now this episode's all about a trip that we did up north out of Lucinda. It's a pretty big episode, heaps of content. So we're just gonna jump straight into it, straight into the blue water diving. Righto, see you back here after. Righto guys, it's that time of year again. The weather looks pretty good up north. So we're packing up. There's a few of us that have got three weeks off. We basically just wait for a good weather window somewhere north of us. In past years, we've done trips to Lizard Island. This year, the weather's not playing a game for us up that way. So we kind of come a little bit south of Lizard. But for now, I've got all my gear packed up, ready to go. You see, I've got my blue water floats there. So we're planning to do a little bit of everything on this trip. So I think I've got everything. We're just waiting for a lift now. And then we'll start um, making our way north. I love going up that way. It's gonna be so good. So with that pending weather up north, the cinder it was for us is here. The weather for the next sort of four to five days was really good out of the cinder. Anywhere further north, not so good. So we made our way out for the first time on a pretty low tide. We'd never left out of Lucinda before, we'd never launched at that ramp before, so we wanted to make sure we had a good track for the next few days, and we did do that. It's a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. The sort of key is to head around and head towards that jetty. Follow the jetty out to about three quarters of the way out we found, and we hung a bit of a left, and there's a nice sort of channel through the shallow area of the sand right out towards the back of the jetty there. Now for day one, we weren't sort of going too far on day one. We just wanted to do a little bit of exploring. We dove some of the closer reefs. We sort of went about three quarters of the way out to the hard line. Now the hard line out of the cinder is not very far at all. Not far for us being here in Mackay. It's way further for us here in Mackay. Out of the cinder, it's about 100, 120 k, something like that. Out of Mackay, it's like 150, 170. So like I said, the plan for this first day was to get a bit of a feel for the area, work out how to get out of the place, shoot a few fish for dinner, and come up with a bit of a game plan for the next few days. We both forgot our flashes, so I've done a bit of a DIY. Ginger beer cans, throw flashes that I've made up. Not gonna be throw flashes anymore. I had one mirror. And some um, salt and pepper chip packet. Hopefully that'll do the job. So with the flash assorted, we had some of that fish that we shot during the day for dinner. Came up with a plan for tomorrow and the plan was to head out and do a bit of blue water diving. So you can see the flasher doing its job there. It actually worked really, really well. Now this first spot, we're just doing drifts. We're jumping in about 80, 70 meters and drifting up towards the shoal. We hadn't seen much other than sharks and a heap of Spanish, there was a lot of Spanish. We're about to jump back into the boat and I could not believe my eyes when I saw this wahoo. Now where this footage kicked off, I'd already been swimming hard for close to a minute on the surface chasing this thing down, thinking I had no chance of getting anywhere near it. As I get down to about sort of 10, 15 meter mark, I'm completely gassed and i just got nothing left in me. I'm trying to do little turns to get the fish turn. Ideally, if I pulled up and just turned hard to the right there, that wahoo would have just turned straight on me, I reckon. But even those tiny little turns that I did, it slowed down enough and I managed to get a shot into it. Now I had heard from a few people that the chance of seeing a wahoo on this trip at this time of year were pretty slim. So we were not set up for shooting wahoo. I had all the big floats on and the second that those big floats tried to go under, the shaft popped straight out. Now after losing that wahoo, we decided to pick up, move spots, we went to another shoal. Same sort of thing, setting up in about 70, 80 meters and drifting in. There was a lot of activity here. We did probably three or four drifts when this good sized dog tooth tuna came in. I put, again, what I thought was a good shot, but as you can see in the footage here, it doesn't look like the spear's gone the whole way through. 
So I didn't know this at the time, obviously. I'm just watching that fish take off, watching the floats get pulled under. I'm thinking, right, we're on for a fight of a life here. We're gonna get this fish and then pop. Shaft pulls out, everything comes back up. The gun's floating up there, Luke swims over, grabs my gun and we've lost that fish. Now as for blue water hunting, I'm very new to it. I've only done it a handful of times, so I'm definitely keen for any tips, any comments, leave them in the comments, hit me with whatever you got. I definitely think if I had a bigger gun, more powerful gun, I 100% would have penetrated that fish, had a really easy shot on it. As well as that, I reckon if I just did a couple more kicks, that fish wasn't going anywhere and I would have easily penetrated with that 1400 rod Allen. Five doggies down there. I know, it's a stream of blood. Just go down and shoot one. There's five doggies down there. Yeah. So as you would have just heard from Luke there, he's having some issues with his sinuses. He's actually getting a little bit of blood into his mask. So he's handed the gun over to me. He'd just come up from a dive. He'd seen a school of about five doggies, he said. So I head down, try and find a school. Get down to the bottom of the flash. We had the flash set at about sort of 10 to 15 meters. See that nice Spanish swim up. Plenty of sharks around, plenty of trevally. Just a lot going on on this little shoal here. It's unreal. These big Spanish, they know when you're not hunting them, they come in so close. Kept looking around, wondering where are these dog teeth? And then I spot that little diamond on the back of their tail, that white spot. I see him over there. I'm pretty sure the Spanish spooks him here. Spooks the school, spooks all those fish and the shark and everything just takes off. And that was the last we saw of the dog teeth on that day. So we decided to lick our wounds, head in up to the reef and try and put a few more fish into the esky. So I'm diving in about 25 odd metres here, you can see how good the viz is, but it's not quite good enough to see the fish that are swimming around on the bottom. So I did a few dives, heading down, just to see what I could see down there. I spot this good school of moo. Now ideally, it's a little bit deeper dive this one, I get down to about 22 odd metres when I'm pulling the trigger here. Really, it's a very slow dive to get down to that depth. Ideally, I should have just bombed straight to the bottom, would have had plenty of time, would have been able to line up nice on this fish. But again, who knows what the fish would have done. It might have taken off or, yeah, who knows. I could have been laying down there for no reason. Chase this fish down and manage to get a good shot into it. Now this is definitely not a giant moo compared to some of the ones that I've seen other people shoot, but it's a PB for me. I've shot other ones up north out off Lizard Island, but I've only shot them sort of in lagoons, in sort of sandy, shallow lagoons on the edge of the reef. It was good to get one a little bit deeper and get a good sized fish as well. So day three begins. This is to be the last day of diving for us. So the plan for us on this day was to head out, head to the reef, try and get a few more fish into the esky. Then after that, we're going to blue water dive all afternoon and just try and get a dog tooth tuna. That was the goal. So you see here, I put a really good shot into a long nose emperor. This is by far a PB long nose for me. Again, I've shot a few up out of Lizard Island. Yeah, this one just monstered those ones. It's a really good fish. Now like what I was saying before, we really wanted to get a dog teeth tuna, so the plan was to head back to where we were the day before. Now you see I've got a different gun here, I've got a bigger gun, it's a double roller, aim right gun, slip tip, cable, um, breakaway setup. I did have a breakaway setup the day before on my gun, on my 1400. This gun was a lot more powerful than that. The reason why I wasn't using that the day before was basically I was not familiar with the gun at all and I just wanted to use something I was familiar with. Now here you can see we've got a big burly trail, it's big chunky burly which is probably not ideal but still it brought the fish in and it brought a small school of dog teeth tuna in. You see I get a shot into a small dog teeth there, one of the bands pops off and imagine if that had happened with that big dog teeth the day before, I don't reckon I would have seen that gun again. Even that small dog too, they put up a fair bit of a fight. I was actually pulling on it the whole way up, trying to keep it off the reef there. Worked my way up to the surface. 
There was no real need for a second shot. It was a pretty small fish and the shaft had actually gone the whole way through the fish and actually acted like another big toggle on the fish and penetrated back through the fish again. It was acting like a giant flopper. So there was no chance that fish was coming off. So this was definitely not a huge dog tooth tuna by any means, but it was my first dog tooth tuna. I was so stoked and it really just fueled the fire. Losing that fish the day before, it just makes me want to get properly set up. So if you've got any tips, you've got any recommendations, please leave a comment. Obviously just pick this video apart, tell me what we did wrong, tell me what we did right. Um, I know that the floats weren't set up right for the Wahoo. I reckon we had them pretty close for the dog tooth, but yeah, any comments, any hints and tips and definitely recommendations, please, please leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching guys. Like what I said, if you've got any tips, comments, any recommendations on any of the blue water stuff, please, please leave a comment. If you haven't already, click that little subscribe button and I'll catch us on the next episode. Cheers. You said before you hadn't shaved. Yeah. Just bloody do it in that. <laughs> Use that.